Welcome back to another episode of Top 9 at 9, the Edge Edition. And I'm your host, Coach Evans, with Zippy Tally Films, and we're really just going to get into it. Uh, Edge is a, a high position, especially with the team I cover, the Ravens. And um, I went through about, probably about 20 or so guys, maybe 21, 22. And I came up with um, my top nine. Um, this is, you know, not the end all be all. This is just my opinion, my two cents. And, you know, if there's some guys in here that you don't agree with or think somebody should be replaced or taken out or just don't agree with my opinion and want to talk about it, put it in the comment section down below. And I appreciate you guys for being here. Uh, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. So let's get started. Number nine on this list, Pat Jones. Um, extremely athletic freak. He um, probably potentially could be higher on this list, but because he plays with those interior linemen that are so good, he gets a lot of one-on-ones that he, he wins off athleticism. Uh, he has a good bull rush. He has a good... Uh, chop cross with his arm he has one other move that i think he's working on but as he continues to to get reps and gets with the team that has a good d line slash edge coach i think he could turn out to be one of the better you know gems in this draft uh probably won't be on anybody's top 10 but mine maybe <laughs> but um i really you know was impressed with what i saw with pat jones when i went and looked at that film and keep in mind he had two interior guys that were pretty darn good give you some stats before we get out of here and move on to number eight with pat jones uh, he's a senior played all four years at pitt five games his freshman year 13 his sophomore year uh and 11 his junior and senior year his best year statistically was his senior year which is this year 2020 so he actually played he had a uh, nine sacks 12 and a half tackles for loss and keep in mind no knock to pat jones pitt had a pretty darn good front four a front three, or however they, you know, whatever they want to call it. Their front seven was pretty darn good. But um, 12 and a half tackles for loss, nine sacks for a senior year is pretty productive. Let's move on to number eight. Coming in at number eight, Greg Rousseau from my team, the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, Greg is probably number one, two, three, or four in a lot of people's list. But Greg not playing this year really left a lot to be desired on you know how how much he's improved or regressed and whatnot so um obviously he's here in number crap obviously he's here in number 15 and um didn't play this year opted out so let's talk about his junior stats well sorry not his junior his sophomore stats he's a red shirt sophomore this year so greg really has been out of he graduated high school in 2018 so he's potentially a top draft pick in 2021 three years removed from high school, two years of football. All right, as a redshirt freshman, redshirt freshman, he had 13 games, 19 and a half tackle for loss. That's probably a 19 to 20-year-old, 19 and a half tackles for loss, 15 and a half sacks for the University of Miami. But those numbers are great. But when you look at it on tape, his ceiling is way higher than what his what he played at. And granted, he got numbers, and that may be sounding kind of contradictory. If he fixes some of the robotic movements and use that length to, to do the fundamentals and not just rely on athletic ability, ain't no, the sky's the limit for this kid. But the fact that he doesn't use those fundamentals the way some other guys that are on this list does, and he kind of bows down from the contact from time to time that's why i had to put him at eight even though he's my guy and i wish he had a play this year with the front seven miami's front seven would have been extra extra nasty i don't know how many more games they would have won but offenses would have feared to having russo to go along with the other guys they had on on, on defense and number eight is greg russo number seven on the list greg russo's teammate quincy roche quincy uh transferred to miami from the university of temple so I'm going to give you his career stats, and these stats include Temple and um, Miami. Freshman, sophomore, junior, so he played all four years. He's a senior. 
Total stats. 54 tackles for a loss. 13, 30 and a half sacks. 54 tackles for loss. 30 and a half sacks in a college career, which is amazing. So his best year statistically was his last year at Temple. Uh, played 12 games. Had 19 tackles for loss. 13 sacks. Amazing. And probably sh- could have went pro then based off that those numbers and Temple is normally is known for having good defensive players. When you look back at Rocky Sin and other guys that came out of Temple, Temple's been a good defensive program to come out of. But he grad he was a graduate transfer, went to Miami, and his senior year at Miami, he put up 14 and a half tackles for loss, which is a little less production. Played two less games, but his sack production went way down. He went from 13 sacks to four and a half. Which leaves a lot to be desired. And, um, you know, Roche, he had a solid, solid year. Miami has a good guy, a good no, three-zero tech, uh, Nesta Jade, that's, that eats up a lot of blockers. So that left, you know, him to be on the edge to kind of win some one-on-ones. And he had a productive senior year. Great career overall. Went to Miami, a, a bigger pro, a bigger program, to, you know, to see if he can put up some of those similar numbers. And he put those numbers up in terms of tackles for loss. But as far as sacks, he didn't. And it's kind of a reason why he didn't do that. So, no knock on, on Quincy, but he's number seven on his list. Um, right behind his, his his teammate. But technically, he's not his teammate because he didn't play with Russo because Russo set out. But university mate. <laughs> uh, Quincy Roche is number seven on my list. Number six on the list, Ronnie Perkins. Even though he's number seven at Oklahoma, he's number six on this list. And I'm going to give you some stats about Perkins before I go into what I like about him. Um, regular junior, uh, freshman, sophomore, junior. His best year statistically was his sophomore year, 2019. He had 13 and a half tackles for loss, six sacks. Uh, finished his career with 32 tackles for loss, which puts him a little, little bit over 10 per year, and 16 and a half sacks, which puts him over a little over five per year. What I like about Ronnie on film is his quickness inside. Uh, standing about, I think he's six, he's six three, two forty seven. So the fact that he doesn't just run into tackles and guards, he makes them actually have to move their feet to block them. He did a lot of stunning at, at Oklahoma, and especially in this Florida game. If you go to this Florida game, there was not a lot of straight pass rush, like straight at the tackle. He did a lot of stunning, a lot of looping, a lot of moving, and that can can be hell on 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 um, offensive line. Simply put. I'm gonna just you know looking at this picture while I'm talking that talking to you. Look at it. Look how he look at how he's built. A lean, a, 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 a sl- I'm sorry, a lean, a slender, you know, long, athletic-looking guy. And you look at 61 for Florida. That guy having to chase number seven around, you know, constantly. That's one of the reasons why Oklahoma kind of did what they did to Florida. And they're saying Florida didn't have a great offensive line, but still, this dude he, he's high motor. Uh, high intensity, um, just a playmaking freak. And I think, I'm, I don't know how disciplined he is, but he goes so hard that even when he makes mistakes, it looks like he's doing the right thing. And I don't know the, how many mistakes he made. I'm just kind of guessing based off my football knowledge. When he Even when he messes up, he's going so hard that it looks like he's doing the right thing and he's creating havoc even if he's doing the wrong thing because he goes so hard. That motor playing D-line, you can't either you got it or you don't. You, you can't coach motor. And he has one of the highest motors I've seen in the 20 some odd guys I watched. And this is number six, Ronnie Perkins. Number five on the list. And I know I'm about to butcher his name, so don't don't bash me in the comment section. Hamilcar Rashid Jr. And I, I got Hamilcar from listening to Bosch talk about him. But I don't really know if how they pronounce his, his whole first name because I don't watch the tape with the sound on. A lot of tape I get that's all 22 don't have sound to it. So if it's not Hamilcar, however you say it, I apologize. But he's number five. Give you some stats about him, about Rasheed Jr. Let's put it like that. Uh, senior, played all four years at Oregon State. Uh, there is some Senior Bowl film out there on him. I think, you know, it's, it's ready to avail- available on YouTube, I think. Uh, Hamilcar. Versus um, some of the offensive linemen at the Senior Bowl. But stat-wise, his best year stat-wise was his junior year. And it's crazy because of what 
transpired in the world, a lot of these kids' best years are going to be that 2019. But just look at this this number from, from 2019. He has a total of 37 tackles for loss. His whole four-year career, he has 37 tackles for loss. In 2019, he had 22 and a half. 22 and a half. His sophomore year, he had 12 and a half. So his senior year, he had none. I'm sorry, his freshman year, he had none. Senior year, he only had two. His sophomore and junior year, he had 27 tackles for loss. No, not 27. He had 37, 35 tackles for loss. 35 tackles for loss. I had to do a quick math. 35 tackles for loss to his senior year. All right, his sex as a junior, 14. 14. And, and simply put, the best way to describe this dude, wrecking ball. Wrecking ball. He understands leverage when he has C gap. He uses that, that inside arm to press the tackle. He keeps that outside arm free. And if you dare try to outrun him on the outside, you're probably going to lose unless you're a 4-3, low 4-4 guy. Probably. He understands leverage. He does not mind taking on pullers. He don't jump, he don't just bang on them like some people, but he does close that gap when he see puller come pullers coming and, and makes it smaller, which is, is big for me playing the age because if you sit out there and let them kick you out on split zone or power or counter or something like that, it, it, it just parts the red sea for the running back. Hamilcar does a good job of, of being aggressive, does a good job of being athletic, and he also did a better than average job than some of the guys dropping into coverage which up you know you really ain't hear me mention that up until now because i didn't see it a lot out of the people that i mentioned from uh six seven eight nine so he does a good to decent job you know dropping the coverage which we like as an edge guy you can have to do that from time to time you have to bluff blitz and cover the flats number five hammer car rasheed junior oregon state number four carlos Boogie Basham Jr. And if I'm not mistaken, he has an older brother in the league. Maybe a Terrell Basham, maybe. Somebody fact check me in, in the comments to make sure I'm right. Brother or cousin that it recently got traded or picked up or something, I think. But fact check me on that. Um, Basham, number nine for Wake Forest. And number nine is the greatest greatest uh, number in sports. I like Basham had it on. Uh, Hammer Car Ward. Hey, it's one of the greatest numbers in sports ever. You know, those two guys, myself, other guys, Ward, Ted, Ted Williams, one of the greatest numbers ever, but I digress. Um, stats for Basham. Senior. Basham does have um, senior bowl film out there. Again, his best year statistically, 2019. 18 tackles for loss, 10 sacks. 18 tackles for loss, 10 sacks. His career numbers, 35 and a half tackles for loss, 19 and a half sacks. So most, more than half of his sacks came that junior year, which, you know, potentially maybe should have came out, maybe, but nobody really knew what was going on in the world, and I don't want to keep harping on it. But, again, he only played six games this year, so he only played in half the games from the year before. Played 13 as a junior, six as a um, as a senior. And, uh, again, he got senior bowl tape by that. You can check it out. And, also, I did a film on him also. But, Basham, freakishly athletic to be that size. 6'5", 285, uh, 15 pounds from being 300. And I see him dropping the flats and co which is amazing. Also does a good job with the edge, you know, covering the edge and controlling pullers. Controlling pullers. I got another term I want to use, but I'm saving that term for one person when it comes to pullers and, 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 and people trying to cut off the edge. But just go look at the tape I did on him and look at his highlight. The proof is in the pudding. I ain't got to constantly dwell on it because I already did a film on him, but number four, Carlos Boogie Basham. Uh, and again, somebody fact-checked me on that if he has a brother or a cousin or something that's already in the league. I think I heard this name go across the waiver wire um, this week. Now we at the meat and potatoes of the list. Three left. Three left. Take this time right here. Put it, you know, because it's going to be premiering. I'm not going gonna, gonna to be in the chat box, but I, this, this is not actually live. Take this time to put in the chat box who you think the top three are real quick real quick get a little jeopardy music going on dun, 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 dun. you know how that go top three left in in the chat box and y'all know who the three are all we gotta do is figure out the order 
Number three, Quitty Pay, University of Michigan. And this was the last film guy I did. And I'm kind of glad I saved them toward the back end. The play that stood out to me was, and let me pull up his stats while I talk about this. He had a stunt. He had a stunt with, I don't, I forgot the, the school he was going against, but he did a stunt. And the guy tried to block him in a hole, and he did a jump cut better than probably most running backs in, in this draft class. And I said, oh, my goodness. At, at 6'4", 272, he jump cut like a running back, 5'11", 200. And then after the jump cut, the explosion to go get the quarterback was unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it's basically like, say you you give a handoff to Saquon Barkley and somebody meets him in a hole and he jump cuts and then runs to the outside. That's the same thing I saw, but on the defensive side of the ball. He ran that twist and the guy, you know, kind of took both guys. Somebody else jumped in a hole to block him. He jump cut at him, saw an opening, and made a beeline to the quarterback. That was one of probably one of the, the most impressive plays I've seen in this film watching session but as for stats stat wise for quitty pay he only had four games this year michigan did had a lot of issues with testing and whatnot they only played four games he had um in those four games four tackles for loss two sacks junior season which again we talked about this earlier he had 12 and a half tackles for loss and six and a half sacks his numbers don't add up to how good i think this kid is going to be and I'm not a Michigan fan, but this this dude really, really impressed me because I didn't see any Michigan games live this year or last year. Because I just I'm not a Mich- I don't like Michigan. But this dude got skills. Number three, Quiddy Pay. Number two, Aziz Ojolari, University of Georgia. And this may be the most pro ready of the bunch. Like ready to plug, put in right now, play right now produce at a good, okay to good level because you don't expect a lot of rookies to just go out there and dominate. But put this guy in a in the right system, he can go out there and maybe not start when the season cranks off, but by week six, seven, eight, nine, he's a guy that you can count on to do his job and produce in the NFL right now. Uh, go watch the tape on him. And I, I mentioned something earlier about I had a term that I, I was saving. I'm saving it for him. Split zone, you have a uh, like a H back or full back or something coming across to block the end man on line of scrimmage opposite side. On counters, you have a guard pulling to uh, kick out the end man on line of scrimmage. On power, you have an H back or a tight end or something trying to kick out the edge guy. The term for Aziz that I I had to use strictly for him is he attacks pullers. He doesn't wait on them to to get on him and he's trying to hold his ground. If he sees you coming, he's coming at your neck. And and by doing that, not only does it decrease the hole where the running back is trying to go, it will completely blow the play up. And if you got linebackers that know how to flow off of that, that's tackles for loss all the time. So I know whoever his linebackers are stayed in the backfield. I don't, I don't know who they are because I was looking at him. But... This dude, when he see a, when he get if he can see you coming as a puller, you better bring your hat because he gonna bring it to you. And no matter if he got one step to find to figure it out or two steps, and don't God forbid he get three or three and can see you coming from you know the beginning of the play, it, it's it's a wrap. But you take this dude and put him in a, a system, he can play for you right now. Aziz Ojolari, number two, number one on the list. Little preview. Uh, back in the '80s, guys wore these to a bowl game. Kind of showed themselves. Number one on this list represents the fatigue, not the army, to the fullest. Jalen Phillips. Jalen Phillips is my number one edge guy in this draft. What can't he do? Physical freak at six five two sixty six. Uh, transferred to Miami from UCLA after dealing with concussions, but that was 
long, that was a while ago. That was in uh, 2017 and 18. Actually set out the whole year of 2019 to get itself right. Came back in 2020, played 10 games for Miami. That's more games than he played at UCLA in the two years he was there. Had 15 tackles for loss, eight sacks, and was the most disruptive force on Miami's front front seven this year. Set the edge, get sacks, uh, hold, go make tackles when you try to outrun them on the edge, slide inside to the one and defeat uh, guards and, and, and centers. Just whatever you need a D lineman to do, he did it. And he covered the you know covered the the, the low flat sometimes, and covered the low flat sometimes. Athletic freak, I think by far the most physically gifted person in this draft. Next two, next two, the guy that won him a 15th Miami the year before, Greg Rousseau. But Jalen Phillips does it all. He has uh, multiple pass rush moves, has a speed rush, has a power rush, has you know moves with his arms and hands and spin and I would love him to be on my team I know it ain't gonna happen but I would love him to be on my team and just <laughs> I, just go watch the film on go watch my film on not only go watch my film watch uh, people other, watch um, what's the guy's name Coleman go watch Coleman's film on Coleman see some of the same stuff I saw and he probably explained it a little better but Go watch that film. There isn't much this dude can't do. Coleman even compared him to the Watt brothers. What how, What kind of higher... You can't have a better comp than that. And I ain't, I ain't into the comps, but you can't have a better comp than being compared to probably one of the greatest edge guys to play the game. And, and TJ's coming into his own now. But again, this is my top nine at nine, man. We, we finishing off with Jalen Phillips. From my school to you. And it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. In this top nine, you had three guys from Miami. You had Jalen Phillips, Quincy Russo. Well, no, not Quincy Russo. Greg Russo and Quincy Roche. But before we get out of here, I'm going to give you the top nine real quick again. You had Pat Jones from Pitt. Uh, Russo from Miami. Uh, Roche from Miami. So, Pat Jones nine. Russo eight. Roche seven. Uh, Perkins from Oklahoma, six. Uh, Hamilcar Rashid Jr. from Oregon State, five. Carlos Boogie Basham, four from Wake Forest. Number three, Quiddy Pay. Number two, Aziz Ojolar of UGA. And number one, Jalen Phillips from Miami. So that's the end of my top nine at nine, edge edition. Moving on to the next uh, position. But if it's your first time here, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And put your comments in the comment section. Uh, most of the time, I get back with them. And again, once I get enough questions for that second episode of Questions with Coach, it's coming to you. And the uh, email for that is siptotally at gmail.com. I uh, appreciate you guys for hanging out with me at 9. Uh, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Coach Evans out. Peace.